The following video will demonstrate the new ArcFlash Labeling Designer in EasyPower 9.5. First of all, get into Short Circuit Focus. Ensure that you're generating the ArcFlash spreadsheet here. Faults and buses. Bring up the ArcFlash report. And then finally get into Designer itself. I suggest you maximize the designer window to give you lots of space to look at your design. And the first thing you notice, there's a new toolbar across the top. The toolbar allows you to do things like load templates from an alternate directory, zoom in the label to fit your view, zoom out the label so that it is actually the same physical size, in this case six by four inches. Show the rulers to help you locate things. And then once you're done with the design, to print the labels. Along the left-hand side of the designer is the ArcFlash devices that came from the ArcFlash hazard report. And you can scroll through them and see your design with different device values. The second column is the templates that we're able to edit. And these are the standard templates that come with the product. And as you can see, if you hover over the template name, you'll see where they came from. In this case, we're going to edit the multicolored 4x6 template. And to start editing, you select the template and click Start Edit. Once you're inside the editor, you have some new options and a new template properties. The first part of the template properties shows you the title of the template, the size of the template. Again, this is a 6x4 template, author of the template, the organization of the template, the language of the template. The language is only used for converting the month names in the template into the native language, for instance, English, Spanish, or French. The default font for the template and some other information about the template, which cannot be edited is more informational. The second pane of the properties is the graphical items that make up the template itself. In this template, we have 27 graphical items, including rectangles, images, and text, and lines. If you select an item in the preview, its properties will show up on the top pane. In this case, I selected an image, and it shows here it's what kind of image it is. This is a built-in icon black danger, white danger, yellow danger, yellow blast, and black warning. So if you select a different icon here, you'll see that it shows up here. And you can change the position. The last field, which all the graphical items have, is visibility. I'll cover that in a future video on conditional editing. So as you can see, when you select an item, it also gets selected in the graphical items. You can alternatively select the item in the graphical item list itself. For example, the text here selects here and shows you the properties and the line down here as well. Now it's important to note that each graphical item again has different properties. The rectangle, for example, has the size and location. It also has a fill color, an outline color, an outline width, and again the visibility, the text has the text content, use a simpler one here, in this case it's just some static text, as well as the horizontal alignment of the text, in this case the text is aligned on the center horizontally around the x coordinate of 3. And this text is also aligned center, this text is left aligned. Once you select an item you have some new additional uh, features you can use, you can delete the item, you can undo the delete, you can redo the delete, and so on. If you select an item, you can uh, also move it forwards and backwards in the list. So for example, the text item here is the third item in the list. If for some reason I wanted to put it back farther in the beginning, so it's rendered first, you can do that just by here. And I could also move it forward so it's on top of the item before it. As you can see, the list gets updated. You can also go all the way to the front with the item, or all the way to the back of the item. And again, you can redo all, undo that as well. OK, the um, way you add items to an existing template 
is you click on one of these items up here that you want to insert. In this case, we're going to insert a piece of text and it shows up in the center. You drag it the position that you want it located at and you enter the text here. Text items can have not only what's called static text, any kind of alphanumeric characters, um, and exclamation points or any kind of text that you want in any font or any uh, language, but also can have variables. So in this case, at the bottom I'm going to put the scenario name. of the design. So I type in scenario name for a description, add a variable, select the variable, the deep, and make it be scenario name. Here. And now as you can see it's scenario name. If I wanted to put the upstream bus next to that, I could also do that with another line of text or on the same line of text. Again, put it down here. add the variable, and select the one we want. Easy as that. You can also edit an existing string and add a variable. In this case I'm going to add the current type for the voltage. There. And again, that's not static text. The KV is static, but the variable is dynamic. And when you select different devices, you can see it changes from KV AC to KV DC. And likewise, the upstream bus at the bottom here also is changing based upon what device I select. There are two new items you can insert in a design. One is ellipse which can of course have its own color, an outline color just like the rectangle have, be positioned wherever you like, and be brought behind another graphical item. The new item that we've added to this release, besides ellipse, is a QR code. QR code is a image that is easable, easily readable by a digital camera, which encodes a sequence of text. In this case, we're encoding the EasyPower URL. Instead, we will encode the upstream bus name. As you can see again, the QR code as we go along will appear or disappear based upon whether the bus name is there or not. If you want something that's always there, we would actually use the device name, which is guaranteed always to be there. And now we're done with our design. We have to just basically give it a new title, and then save it as a new file. And we exit the editor, and then we go to print with our new design, ready to print.